Jaber reveals that the return to nothingness is the best approach if the source of spirit and light are willing participants in the reincarnation cycle and entrapment. The flesh is of dark, but the illusion is of light, therefore it's all still energy. He questions also the theory of the Gnostics, being that Christ's morning star is really the liberator from a higher God that deliberately fragmented itself to enter through vessels to destroy the matrix from within. Keep in mind that it's still energy. So although the Demiurge created the world and the vessels, he uses it from the same sources. The question lies, why is it taking over 4,000 years for either to triumph over the other? Are both operating together for a dual understanding of living? Was the veiling of evil beneficial for mankind? Is this an opportunity to create a new kingdom operating in spirit over flesh once matrix, once this matrix is destroyed by Christ's morning star and his elects? Or is it just a ploy for humanity's willing subjugation? Will the vessel be as free as the spirit in the new kingdom? Or will it just be a recalibrated tool used by the ruler or rulers under a different system? At one point, I have observed that Jaber leaned towards the Christ Morningstar theory. But the more he researched, I'm thinking he felt the return to nothingness is the best method to finally achieve eternal peace from the ongoing strife. If people only pay more attention to the signs that sinning is living, then maybe being in the matrix wouldn't be so bad. If you end the conflict within thyself, one can manifest harmony outwards. The balancing theory sounds like a dream come true, but it's apparent that some people find joy in causing opposition for others. They thirst for the pain, the infliction, and blood. Maybe that's part of the balance, to live in one's truth regardless of the rejection or hate, the good old frenemies. It gets exhausting, and I can relate as to why he pushes for annihilation of this matrix. This melting pot of energies and the siphoning systems. You need, need, need. You won't, won't, won't. You end up feeding the beast for more. These cycles always give you just enough to keep you coming back for more. These tricks make detaching from this game hard. But the more you detach, the clearer you will see the game for what it is. The more people awaken to detaching, the more chances of destroying this matrix and returning to nothingness can be manifested. They indulge you, then they deprive you. They really do feed off the polarities of energies, and it's simply entertaining to pull our strings. That's why you gotta condition yourself to detach from as much as possible because this matrix is like a drug. Or drugs. It sounds good, but in the end, the point of their methods is to keep you playing. A coercion to make you feel like you are on its winning side. Why is it after 4,000 plus years, nothing hasn't really been resolved? Wars, suffering, subjugation, poverty, agony, opposition, the cults, the pacts, the back and forth, the propaganda, all are due to the establishing of this matrix, this realm. It seems all roles are played by the deceivers, the receivers of the masses' energies, the collectors. Choose either more spirit or more flesh and feed into the respected governors. Feed into their cause and get back in ratio of what's given. Just play the game the way it was built. Indulge, adapt, and live. That's why you die and reincarnate. You live out certain paths and scenarios each time and in between it's the resting period. Kind of like purgatory, but eventually you'll go back to playing the game. Again. <laughs> I feel it's to understand the duality of this existence and to see the good and bad of living in the flesh and the spirit. It's to help others remain humble and not be so quick to judge others, including God, Satan, Jesus, etc. To encourage self-reflection and find that balance with all aspects of self and to respect others as they are. To ultimately end strifes. Look, I say use the same forces that created this matrix to destroy it. Relinquish the entrapments of flesh and remain spirits. Bam, problem solved. No one has to accept anything then. Just free float around. I think doing that would go against the purpose of allowing full reign of evil and good. We are meant to learn from the differences and grow while learning to respect others even when we don't understand them. To reach a balance of polarities and fast finding sophisticated measures to give everyone their true desires without imposing on others' free will. Basically, just let people be. 
At this point, it all depends on what you want to attach to. Pick a sin, any sin. Pick a truth, any truth. <laughs> Whatever. Destroy this matrix in the siphoning of energies, the experimentations, the lessons, and the cycles of suffering. Free the spirits. We believe you. The return to nothingness is the best plan out this entrapment. The matrix effects wears off even though you try to find more to attach onto, but the awakening is inevitable. The manifestations to nothingness will be fulfilled. That was Christ's morning stars plan the whole time. He needed the creator of this entrapment to think he converted to his side by self-sacrifice and blood wars. Sometimes you gotta fight fire with fire. He knew that the sins and spiritual warfare would cause the spirits within to awaken, thus opening the portals to demons, activating disasters, erupting hellfire, and bringing forth Armageddon the holy war that would destroy this entrapment kingdom world. What a relief. Now listen to the inverted message of Christ's morning star. This version insists on the escape of the matrix instead of reshaping it into a utopia of sinful salvation.